Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty and welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you didn't already know, Ryujinx is a Switch emulator that works great on Apple Silicon Macs. However, we're still using the very first release of this emulator on the macOS platform and there are plenty of fixes and tips which are going to make your gaming experience a lot better. So what I've done today is I've compiled 10 top tips which are going to help you get the best performance out of Switch games on a Mac. We're also going to do things like show you how to pair the Joy-Cons correctly and work around the left Joy-Con issue. And I'm also going to show you how the multi player system works and get games like Splatoon 3 working over local area network or over the internet as well. So make sure to watch until the end of the video to catch all of these great tips. I've also put in chapter markers so that you can skip around and find the right tip for you. So if you haven't subscribed already then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming tutorials. So the first round of tips are going to be focused on performance. So if you want to maximize performance you might want to apply what's called a title update. So if I click manage title updates after right clicking on a game in Ryujinx, what you can do is go ahead and add and find different patches. So for example here we're going to upgrade Pokemon Scarlet. I want to go ahead and add a title update. So we're going from 1.0.0 to 1.0.1, press save. And then Pokemon Scarlet is going to be upgraded. So when I double click on this now we're going to go ahead and load up a new version of the game. And this is going to give substantially better performance than the original released version. This doesn't necessarily work for every single game. For example, Doom 2016, the 1.0 version actually boots, whereas if I try to do the title update, then this is actually not going to boot at all on Mac OS. So some title updates are helpful, some less so. So another thing that you can do within game is to click on the bottom left hand side of the screen where you can see docked and handheld modes. So commonly docked mode runs at 1080p as if it's running on a TV. And if you switch to handheld mode, that often changes to a lower resolution, for example, 720p. And very often this gives a small performance performance boost and also downgrades the visuals very slightly. So probably worth checking out if you want to squeeze a little bit more performance. Another thing you can do is you can go to the graphics settings and change the resolution scale to custom and you can switch this to say something like 0.5 and this is going to give a substantially lower resolution however it's probably going to give a better performance boost in virtually every single game. You can also combine 0.5 resolution with docked and handheld modes. It's really up to you if you think this is worth the performance boost. Presumably as well it's going to use less power and make your Mac less hot. So Reading on a Mac does feature quite a lot of screen tearing and there is a vSync button on the bottom left hand side of the screen. It doesn't function like a traditional vertical synchronization. However, it does unlock the frame rates in some games. So for example, in Fire Emblem Three Houses, if you disable VSync, it will actually go to 60 frames per second. No special cheat or patch is required. If you want to find out how to patch 60 frames per second in most Switch games, then make sure to check out my main channel video, which is going to teach you how to get 60 FPS cheats and patches working. So one thing I'd say is about 80% of the games seem to work fine on readings on a Mac. However, for those situations in which you can't launch a game, it might be helpful to change a couple of settings. For example, disabling hypervisor allows a game like Zelda Breath of the Wild to boot, although the performance isn't great at the moment. Also, another setting that you can tweak is you could launch the game as an Intel application if you control click on Ryujinx and then check the button open with Rosetta then apparently some games are going to launch where they wouldn't have done before. So in my last video I talked about how to build a macOS version of Ryusak but now we don't have to do that we can now just go ahead and download the latest macOS release. So I'll leave a link in the description for this github page and all you have to do is click on releases and then we can download the full macOS version that's going to be this .dmg. So I click on the latest release of the arm64.dmg and I can go ahead and download this. So once the file is downloaded all we need to do is go to finder and then downloads and double click on the dmg and then go ahead and drag and drop this into the applications folder. Within applications we can go ahead and double click on Ryusak. So if you have this error message where it says that it's damaged it can't be opened all you have to do is go to the spotlight icon and then type in the word terminal. Then we want to type in the command xattr space dash cr space. Then we'll drag Ryusak into terminal, press return and now we're going to double click and now it's going to allow us to open this up correctly. So here we're going to agree to the terms and conditions. And so Ryusak is automatically reading the correct folder .config forward slash Ryujinx. So we don't have to locate that config file on our own as long as you've already run Ryujinx at least once. So one of the main functions of Ryusak is that you can go ahead and download different shaders. However, some games don't function correctly if you have too many shaders. For example, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will crash if you try to load it. So what you can do is just reset your shader cache. So click on here, open shader cache folder, and basically just go ahead and delete all of the files within that shader folder. And then if I go back to the game, I can see that my local shader count is zero. If I load up Ryujinx and now go to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate and I double click, then this is gonna load up. We don't have any shaders cached, but at least it's gonna load up correctly. 
and this is going to be a playable game. So the next thing is that a lot of people notice that if you try to pair Joy-Cons, the left Joy-Con is not working correctly. It does not map properly to Ryujinks. But there is a fix which I'm going to show you how to do now. So in order to pair up our Joy-Con controllers, the first thing that we need to do is to go to the top left hand side of the screen, click on the Apple logo and then go to System Settings. Then we're going to go to Bluetooth section here and we're going to make sure that we have Bluetooth turned on and that we have nearby devices searching. And then we need to put our Joy-Cons into pairing mode. So if you get your Joy-Con here and you press this little button here, here. And basically you want to kind of hold this down until it starts flashing like that. And that's going to make it appear under the nearby devices list. We're going to go ahead and press the connect button. And basically once it's paired, then this light should be solid. So the left Joy-Con here is paired up. We're going to do the same with the right Joy-Con. Hold it down until it starts flashing then press the connect button under nearby devices, and now that is paired up. So the main problem is that you're gonna notice that this is not gonna pair up correctly with Ryujinx. So in order to do this, what we need to do is to install Steam and then add Ryujinx as a Steam application. So I'm gonna double click on our Steam application, which I've already installed. So once we have Steam opened up, we're gonna click on games on the menu bar and then click add a non-Steam game to my library. Here we're gonna allow access. And then we're going to click the browse button. So we're going to select Ryujinx here, press open and make sure that's ticked on the left and then click add selected programs. And now if we do a search for Ryujinx, we're going to launch this through Steam. So I'm going to press the play button now. Now Ryujinx is going to open up and we're going to go to options and then settings. And then we're going to go to input and then we're going to select the input device, Nintendo Switch Joy-Con L and R. So we want to select this one as a combined controller. So select this and then we're going to make it emulate a Joy-Con pair like that. Now I'm going to press save and now we're going to launch a game. Here we're going to open up Metroid Prime. So we have the little Steam overlay icon there. That means that the Joy-Cons are going to go through the Steam input. So now you can see that both Joy-Cons are working correctly. I can hold down this left shoulder button and then this Joy-Con joystick is working correctly. I can fire and this is basically working 100% correctly. So now that is how you work around the Joy-Con issue with Ryujinx 1.1.0 on macOS. So now I'm going to do is to show you how to play multiplayer through Ryujinx. So obviously we cannot play through the official Nintendo servers. However, there are some workarounds. So for example, here we can play Splatoon 3 using the local area network method. So every Switch game does the LAN method slightly differently. I'm going to leave a link in the description for this guide, which contains methods for every single supported game. Today we're going to show you the Splatoon 3 method. So the first thing I want to do is to go to the shoal area. So if you press the X button and then we go down and then select shoal, I'm going to do the same with this side as well. And the next thing we need to do is to enable LAN mode. So I'm going to hold down the left and right triggers here. And then we're also going to hold down the L3 button as well for about five seconds. Then it's going to push us into LAN mode. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side as well. And that's put us both into LAN mode. Then we want to make sure that we both have the correct network settings. So we go to settings, network, and then make sure that guest internet access is enabled and make sure that we have the correct network interface. So you can do that by holding down the option key and then clicking on your Wi-Fi icon. And that'll tell you that we have the interface name EN0. So I've selected network interface EN0. And then the mode I'm going to select is LDN Ryu. So press save. Same deal with this side as well. The network LDN Ryu and then make sure that the guest internet access LAN mode is turned on. Then we'll go back to the show on both sides. I'm going to use this menu to create a private battle and then I'll create a room. And on this side as well, I'm going to go to private battle. Then I'm going to select the game that's now available. Let's see here, Ryu player. That's the hosted game on this side. So I'm going to click join and yes. So we've now connected together. I'm going to start an actual game now. Here you go. You can see here now that both characters are all facing each other. I'm able to select this one and it's all working correctly. So this is really impressive that this multiplayer works at all. So how about if you want to play Ryujinx online against other people on the internet? Well, in that case, we're gonna use something called the Ryujinx LDN. This is basically an online mode which is organized through the official Ryujinx Discord. You'll find specific channels for games like Splatoon and Monster Hunter and also Pokemon as well. Private games can be organized by implementing a network passphrase. So only players with the same passphrase can play together. And the main difference from before is that we can have guest internet access LAN mode turned off. So most of this works pretty well. We can go ahead and create a game and have people join from over the internet. And you'll have to organize these games privately, but it seems to work pretty well. Plenty of other games are supported and often have slightly different instructions. So make sure to check out the Reading's LDN guide online, which I'll leave a link to in the description. One difficulty I did find is that if you try to manage user profile and you wanted to edit your name, for example, then the text input isn't quite working correctly. I can delete, but not really add characters properly. So on the Mac side, you might find a few players just called Ryu. Hopefully we'll get a fix in the near future.
So anyway, those are my 10 top tips for running Reuters on a Mac. If you think I've missed anything out, then please make sure to leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.